long shadow text effect. I want to rebuild and animate this. No, not in After Effects, that would be too easy. Wouldn't it be cool if you made it 100% in Premiere Pro without any plugins, with editable text, customizable colors, and you can even play it back in real time? No Premiere Pro user should be left behind. I do a lot of editing in Premiere Pro, and as a motion designer, I usually create my text animations in After Effects. But it's very time consuming to switch apps, and I constantly ask myself if certain motion design stuff can also be accomplished inside Premiere Pro. By the way, I wasn't aware that uh, Long Shadow Effect is still popular in 2020. I'm sorry for my nasal voice. My hay fever is really, really strong this year. Before we start, make sure that in the general project settings, the renderer is set to one of the GPU options. Otherwise, my technique won't work. That being said, let's create a new sequence. Title it 3D Text and create a new text layer. In the Essential Graphics panel, I'm gonna choose a bold font. In my case, it's Avenir Next Pro Bold. But of course, you can choose any font you like. I'm gonna center align the text and type in my name. Sorry for not being creative here. Let's change the sequence title to 3D Text Michael, which helps us identifying it when we have to deal with multiple sequences later on. With the text layer selected, I'm gonna nest the text layer and name it Edit Text. This puts the text layer into its own sequence where I am able to modify the text. Next, I'm gonna create a color mat, choose a random color and place it above the text layer. Then I'm gonna change blend mode to overlay to make the text visible. Well, I could have put it below the text layer without changing the blend mode, but I have my reasons I'm gonna explain later. Before I show you my trick to achieve the long shadow, let me first show you the common technique that originally came into my mind and you may already know. I'm gonna move up the two layers by one video track and duplicate the text layer into the bottom video track. Then I'm gonna apply a drop shadow effect to it. Let's keep the direction angle value of 135 degrees in mind. Then I'm gonna change opacity to 100 and duplicate the drop shadow effect multiple times. You simply create a shadow of a shadow of a shadow of a shadow and so on to achieve the long shadow effect. In this case, I duplicated the drop shadow effect more than 150 times. And after a while, you'll notice that Premiere Pro starts to react quite slowly with so many drop shadow effects. Okay, let's animate it. I'm gonna create an adjustment layer, move up the color mat by one video track, put the adjustment layer below the color mat layer and apply a transform effect to it. I'm gonna move the playhead to second two in the timeline Click on the position stopwatch to create a keyframe and then go back to second zero. Then I'm gonna increase the Y position to move down the text layer. That also creates another keyframe automatically. I use the transform effect in conjunction with an adjustment layer that allows me to animate everything that's below the adjustment layer at once instead of animating each single clip. And this is also why I put the color mat layer above all other layers, because I don't want it to be affected by the transform effect. I increase the Y position to 1155 until the text is completely out of frame. Now, how do we determine the X position in order to animate the text precisely along the shadow? Sorry guys, we have to do some math. When this is 135 degrees, then this must be 45 degrees, because the sum is always 180 degrees. And we know the value of the distance by which we move the text layer vertically. This is 1155 minus the original position, 540, and the result is 615. And based on one of the trigonometry equations, the horizontal distance must be 615 times the tangent of 45 degrees, which is coincidentally 615. 
As a rule of thumb, we can now say that objects that move along a 45 degrees line, the distance traveled in y and x position is equal. So in this case, you don't need trigonometry equations at all. But of course, the trigonometry equation is still useful when you deal with other angles than 45 degrees. Now, let's add 615 to the current x position, and that is 1575. Next, I'm gonna right-click on the last keyframe, go to Temporal Interpolation, select Ease In, and change the animation curve to like this in order to have a smooth animation. Let's hit play to watch the result. Looks good, but the real-time playback is so choppy. And that's because of the excessive use of the drop shadow effect. Now, let's use my approach. But don't worry, we don't have it to do it from scratch again. And the drop shadow method will be still a part of my technique. Okay, let's duplicate the 3D text Michael sequence, rename it to 3D text new Michael, and open that sequence. I'm gonna remove the bottom text clip with the numerous drop shadow effects, duplicate the top text clip into the empty track, and apply a directional blur to it. Then I'm gonna change direction to 135 degrees, which is the default value we memorized from the drop shadow effect, and change length to 540. Now, attention! I'm gonna add an alpha adjust effect, check ignore alpha, and now look at that. Well, that's basically the trick, but as I said in the beginning, you can only see the effect when renderer in the project settings is set to one of the GPU options. Before we fit it to the text, let's clean it up a bit by applying a brightness and contrast effect to it. Let's change brightness to 40 and contrast to 100. Then I'm gonna move up the layers by one video track, create a new black video, put it into the empty track, apply a track matte key effect to it, set composite using to matte luma, and matte to video 2. Now we have a cutout black stripe. Next I'm gonna apply a linear wipe to the black video, put it above the track matte key effect, change wipe angle to 180 degrees, and increase transition completion until the black stripe touches the text at the bottom. In my case it's 50%. Let's move up these layers by one video track, duplicate the top text clip into the empty track, apply a drop shadow effect, change opacity to 100, distance to 3, copy the effect and paste it a couple of times. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? But this time we only need about 55 copies of the drop shadow effect to close the gap. Then I'm gonna toggle off the color matte video track because its purpose was only to make the black shadow visible. Let's delete the 3D text Michael sequence because we don't need it anymore. I'm gonna drag the 3D text new Michael sequence onto the new item icon to nest it inside a new sequence that I name main sequence. In the main sequence timeline, I'm gonna move up the video track by one track, place the color mat into the empty track and hit play. It plays back way smoother now. I'm gonna lock the video track and remove the audio track as we don't need it. Then I'm gonna apply a tint effect to it where I can adjust the colors of the shadow and the text. I want to show you that it's even possible to play back multiple texts with this effect in real time without being choppy at all. Before I do that, let's create a text template first. Unfortunately, it's not possible to export an essential graphics text template that includes multiple and nested clips. As a workaround, I save the complete project, name it 3D Text Template, import it and check Import Selected Sequences and allow Importing Duplicate Media, select the 3D Text New Michael sequence and hit OK. I'm gonna open the imported folder, click through the nested sequences until I'm inside the Edit Text sequence. We can edit the text, let's say Ponge, and rename the 3D text new Michael sequence to 3D text new punch, so we don't get confused with other existing sequences. Let's open the main sequence timeline. 
and I'm gonna open the 3D text new punch sequence in the source monitor and drag the video only icon into the timeline so we just get the video track without the audio track. I can now reposition the new clip, copy and paste the tint effect, do some color modifications and hit play. Playback is still smooth. Now let's duplicate these two tracks and see what happens. Voila! Still not choppy at all. Of course, it all depends on how powerful your graphics card is, but even if Premiere Pro starts to lag, workflow should be still good enough. That's it guys, 